Hi everybody, welcome to uh, the next episode. And this episode, as we said, we were going to be talking about medication and the causes and how to, how to heal fish correctly. So we at the location of Jody and Tanya Boshoff and we are going to be doing a follow-up on one of the fish operations and uh, we're going to discuss that. So Jody, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it and thank you for uh, this lovely garden opportunity that we have to, to show off the fish as well. Yeah. Jody, tell me, I see there's a portable pond. Mm -hmm. I know you're very big on quarantining. Mm -hmm. um, why is it important that we quarantine and not just leave the fish in the water? Yeah, sure. There's a couple of reasons. Um, if you look at the pond behind us here, you'll see it's quite a big pond. It's uh, five meters by three meters, right. by 1.8 deep. So that puts it around about 25,000 liters. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, to medicate 25,000 liters, it's too much. The, it's the expense is just going to be too high. And then, of course, you don't want to medicate fish that aren't sick. Well, that's so, good. So what you rather do is you get a smaller um, little swimming pool yeah. and you put the fish inside there. That's about 2,400 liters of water. Um, and in the end, it's easy to medicate. It's easy to catch the fish. So it just makes more sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, the other thing is, is that we we often put one single fish in a, in a uh, quarantine facility, but um, they do kind of get stressed, um, and it's always best to have another fish in there. In this case, we have got a fish that has come from our fish hospital of yours, that we, I did some uh, treatments there, and then we did further treatment over here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, what uh, is the results that you found? Well, um, look, first of all, uh, I think it, it worked out nicely. It's not good that the one fish has got the awesome that's sick, of course. Um, but the, with the other fish that was sick at the same time, you know, we could doctor further, yeah. So we could actually put it in without it affecting the fish and that type of thing. So that kind of made sense to us. Yeah. And then, of course, um, you also put uh, specific medication in the water. Yes. Also treated the water, uh, got the balance right. And um, we constantly had a look at the temperatures as well, because temperatures and medication is, um, is, is, is really a problem. If it becomes too cold, mm. then medication does, certain medication don't work mm. very well. Mm. So we started off with really a salt treatment. Mm. And, um, and then we moved on from there. Um, the particular fish that was in my fish hospital, um, the bacterial infection is, is now cleared up completely. Yes, it's very nicely. So. Um as you rightly said, we've used the salt in it. Um, we used the permangamate as well. Yes. Um, and then, of course, used the cho uh, chloramine tea, um, which worked quite well. Um, so, yes, I think all in all, it's very good. I think what I will just mention is uh, right there by the pond, you'll see I'm using that pot. Now, that specific pot that's there, it's actually the second filter for the big pond. Uh -huh. But by using that, I actually got the good bacteria inside there. So when I set up the medi pond, right. it already had the bacteria and the stuff. Ah, okay. So it yeah. wasn't the fish weren't, weren't weren't shocked in any way yeah. whatsoever. You'll actually see inside the little pool itself um, a bit of algae and stuff starting to grow. Now, once you see that, then you know there's a bit of bacteria and stuff starting. Here. That is one of the biggest problems from a medical perspective that uh, koi keepers uh, fall culprit to, and that is buying a fish and immediately taking the fish with the water and just plonking it into, yeah, exactly. into the pond. First of all, you shock the fish. Mm. Second of all, the pond is used to its own bio system, mm -hmm. its ecosystem if you like. Um, and then of course now when you introduce any new fish, uh, a new fish comes from different water and can bring along any form of uh, pathogen or bacteria. Correct. And Correct. that of course then creates a trouble. Correct. So. Um, if a person doesn't have a quarantine facility, what's very, very important is, as you said, and it costs a bit more, mm. is to then quarantine in the main pond, but then you've got to treat the entire pond. Yeah, and what, what also happens then is it's like anything, it's like um, the medication we as humans use. Your body actually afterwards starts working against it, so in other words, the medication doesn't work anymore. Correct. And that's Resistance. why you don't want to use it for the fish as well. Yeah, yeah. No, so look, a, a, in the end, that cost I would say about 2,000 rand, but it's something I can put away again, reuse whenever I want. So, Correct. yeah, that went out nicely. Okay. So, what's, whenever I come through to you, we always do a water analysis with our kit, 
and we assess the water because water is everything in this game. Correct. And um, why we test the water is because, as you know, um, if there's any imbalance, that's when you're going to start creating or causing uh, the fish um, to stress mm -hmm. and you get the likes of ulcers and, uh, and secondary bacterial infections and so forth. So from the water, just to understand, we have a history of, and we always check, you're very good at that, we check to see what was the pH, what is the pH now, and we have a look at all the various parameters, ammonia, nitrate, nitrite. Mm. But what I also want to say is that the importance of the water is, is, is also to see the behavior of the fish at the same time as well. If you carefully uh, see how the fish swim around, they tell you what's going on in the pond. There's mm. certain things to look out for. And then, of course, the second thing that we do is um, we then, after the water analysis, we then go onto the microscope and we do a microscope scrape. In other words, we pick randomly one or two fish and we just take a scraping of the mucus. Normally what we do is on the gills, just off the gill uh, filament, uh, gill plate, we just take a scrape and then what we do is we wait for five minutes. And the reason for that, before we put it under the microscope, is that if there's any parasites in that mucus, it then they they start then to to start swim out, and that's where you're able to pick it up. Why we do two and sometimes even three and four is because if you look at the behaviour of the fish and you see that something isn't right, um, you then do one microscope analysis and you don't pick up anything. And normally a person would say, no, you've got no no problems, but. We do a second and a third and a fourth if we have to, and many, many instances we find that the parasites were underlying uh, and we find it on the third or the fourth. So that's basically from a proactive measure. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to be doing a follow-up on uh, one of the fish and uh, we're going we, we've, we've, we're to see what the progress is on the previous operation. and. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit of work. There is a little bit of work still to be done. You can't do that under normal circumstances. With smaller operations, you can, uh, you know, we can sort it out in, in one particular uh, operation session. But um, a lot of times you don't want to stress the fish. In this instance, it's in the middle of winter. So we've decided, and you uh, have agreed, that we do this in a follow-up session. So we do it over two operations. And this is now what we're going to be doing. So come along, let's go and have a look. Here can you fish. Right. We are going first the clean fish. Okay, we're just going to put a little bit of medicine on the top. Much, much better. I think with um, all the medicine that we're also putting in the water, you know, it's another two or so weeks. The fact that we've got, well, we've got now a, like, mm -hmm. a, like, a, like a secondary bacterial growing over, almost like a fungus, but yes. that's, that's the protection. And what's happened is, is that the, um, the product that we used Mm -hmm. to seal the wound mm -hmm. that that is still there the powder is still yes, on there as yes. you can see now Jody as, Jody as you know that we use these these bags because it's much easier much safer for the fish mm. and the fish don't uh, you know they don't get they don't get they don't get hurt uh, when we're putting them under anesthetic Thomas Krefer made the bio sleep I believe Right, you can clearly see that the fish is now as comfortable as he possibly can be. It's not, uh, not battling. So now we just calm it down a bit and then we, we put the fish under. Now a lot of times, uh, Jody, the people talk about clove oil yeah. or nalki willy. Nalki willy. Is, uh, and you know, that, that is quite oily. Mm. And we don't use that for, 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 for the fish mm. because you want, you want the fish, you don't want to put the fish, euthanize the fish, mm. but you want to, um, uh, you don't want the oil to be stuck on mm. the filaments because then the fish battles. And also, if you want to use it, you actually have to put the precise dose in. Yeah. The koi, or, uh, uh, yeah, koi patient, I can say, is different depending on its immune system. I'm particularly aware of that's why we got oxygen mm -hmm. with us, surgical oxygen. So if I find that a fish at this stage turns very quickly mm. and goes under 
then, um, then I know that I've got to watch that particular fish mm. when it comes to waking the fish up. Mm. Um, but otherwise, you know, we just wait a few minutes and then we'll, we'll clearly see the results. But also just to mention, winter is one of the most difficult times to put the fish. That's why yeah. I don't do it myself. Yeah, good because point. of the cold water, the fish doesn't wake up as quick. Yeah. We agree that we're quite happy with the results that we're finding here. Yeah. We'll just we'll just sort of scrape a little bit and just yes, see what. the red and the pink. Yeah. yeah we'll yeah. just have a look at that, and uh, this is where we're going to sort yeah. out those two scales. Yeah, we almost probably take out about four or five there, just to make sure that it hasn't grown. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how around. healthy or unhealthy those scales are. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe also just to explain to everyone. Um, the reason the fish actually got that ulcer was uh, during the pairing stadium. Um, the fish were bumping it against the sides and stuff, and then it got a sore, and the sore later developed into an ulcer, and it just gets worse and worse and compounds after that. Yeah, the the ulcer we we, we, we managed to sort out. Mm. It's it's with the regrowth of the skin mm. and the scales. Sometimes it's not as effective. Mm. or it doesn't grow as smooth as the other scales that we see on mm. the fish itself. And so we, we chose to, because there were some complications, and the reason for that is because um, we found bacteria on the underlying of the scale mm. that was already covered, mm. and uh, we, we could see that, that was, there was still trouble, so that's, that's what we did. Bacteria, under scales, that's why you'll see that some of the scales are so bad that you can literally just pull it off. Mm. And that needs to come out because, um, and then also the, the dead skin. Yeah, I think the harshest part is actually pulling the good scales to make sure there's nothing under it. Yeah, it's uh, That's a pretty... where a person feels the, the worst for the poor fish. Yes. And now what we want to do is we want to work underneath taking away all the dead skin and now we want to make sure that everything is disinfected. Right, we got. Okay, so first what I like to use, Kevin, I've got different medications, um, but it's hydrogen peroxide. Um, you use it on people as well, but um, it kills all germs and bacteria off. Yeah, you want to try not to eat too many of the other scales, especially with peroxide. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. And also don't just put any volume on your fish. Try and get the lowest um, hydrogen peroxide volume that you can get. This is 3% at volume 10. basically freezing up and it's spraying underneath. Liquid nitrogen. And what's nice about the liquid nitrogen as it's freezing, you can you can cut away the skin. There you can see it's all frozen and it's easier to remove that way. Thomas is here after the sea stuff. Okay. Now we're good to go here. Right. Okay. Let's have a look here. You see that was the yeah, put this below. That was the bad skull. Yeah, we can put it below. Let's have a good look. I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. That's still nice and closed, so it's sealing up very nicely. Still sealed up nicely. I don't want to actually uh, tamper with that mm, in any way. What I, what I want to do is just have a look and see what the scale the scale's holding on. Yes, the scale's holding on. I don't like this scale. Can you see this? Mm. Look at that. Look at that. That's the bad scale. So, the queer weer, Thomas. Now you want to watch out with peroxide here. 
because if you put the peroxide on, that whole healing process has to start again. Yeah. So exactly. the peroxide goes, bubbles, and it actually kills off that good part, even though it doesn't look too nice. There we go. We're sealing it all up again, just like we did before. That section there. Yeah. I also saw that. Jody, I think the important thing that I can compliment you on is, is that you know you're proactive with your fish. You don't wait until it's, you know, almost too late. Mm. And uh, that's that's important. It's important to, to 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 know your pets. Mm. I can tell you one thing though. I think with ulcers, right. a person needs to act immediately, like with this one. Yeah. Normally we would just medicate it and not pull the scales. Yeah. But I think the best is, and I think Kevin agrees after witnessing this one, that okay. uh, it's just best pulling the scales. Right. We're ready to go, guys. Right now, as we said, you know, in the winter when the water's cold, fish battle to. Uh, wake up and you've got to be very very careful at this point in time. What I do is I use this this motion with the fish to include to increase the the blood flow. I, it's just a method that I find that works very well for me. Fish is in good shape if I have a look at the skin color. A lot of times if there is a you're finding especially on your darker fish when you're finding a creamy film almost like somebody's put a dollop of cream over the fish then, um, then there's definitely something going on, uh, bacterial infection or, um, or uh, parasites. The other thing also to look out for is eyes that are either popped out, they call it pop eye, or eyes that are severely sunken in. Normally that gives me an indication that there's parasites, um, uh, then, and, and we normally, I then look for costier parasites. The important thing is when you're introducing any new fish into your pond, a week afterwards, best to do a microscope scrape, have a look and see. Also check the behavior of your fish. Either the new fish will show strange behavior and, uh, or the older fish in your pond will show, will show uh, strange behavior. And that's, that's the telltale sign something is not right. Other signs where, where fish are not well is when they're jumping and they, they're flashing or flicking on the sides at the bottom as well. They'll be swimming and then they'll be flicking to say that I've got parasites. If fish are huddled like this, similar fashion by the oxygen, it's saying I've got parasites in my gills and uh, I can't breathe. If the fish is head down and tail up, it's saying I've got I've got uh, parasites on my on my body. So there's certain telltale signs. When a fish has pectoral fins, that's these on the side, pectoral fins are totally clamped. It's saying I'm not well. They do snooze like that, so don't be fooled on that. Um, just just uh, monitor if the fish is lying like that for a long time, then there's a problem. If the fish is fins are clamped, on, the pectoral fins are clamped and the tail fin is clamped and the fish is sort of on its side like this, then it's, it's trouble. It's saying I'm, I'm seriously ill, I need, I need help. Give me a sea stuff down, please. Thank you, Thomas. There's various medications that one can use and please, the important thing, and I can't, can't stress it, enough is you know don't throw medication after medication into the pond a lot of times you actually worsen the situation the important thing is to understand why you're putting the medication in what parasite is there or what fungal or bacterial infection is going on and so that you can treat properly um, don't just throw any uh, um, mixture of medications in because some of the medication formulas are not compatible with each other. So you'll be very careful. If you've got salt in your water, you must be careful with the level of salt before you put in um, uh, the likes of the potassium permanganate, um, that kind of thing. 
so you've got to be very, very careful. You also must be very accurate with your medication. Um, you can overdose very, very quickly. Potassium permanganate, for instance, starves the water of oxygen. The reason it's reaction, it needs oxygen to react. So you'll find that if you're doing a big potassium treatment, you'll find that the fish will start coming to the surface. And that's, and that's basically where the, you know, an indication that uh, your water is being starved of oxygen because of the chemical uh, reaction. Potassium permanganate, also any metals, and you can't also put this in, uh, in sort of a, a farm dam, uh, potassium permanganate, because with all the minerals that are in the, in the natural water, which should be there, um, it reacts with the uh, potassium permanganate and it then creates a toxin. So one's going to be very, very careful. Always know the volume of your water. And that's why you know exactly the volume of the water here, so we know exactly how to treat. If you treat too little medication, of course, you're losing the entire effect. The important thing about medications, the question will be, why do I have to medicate once, twice, and perhaps three times, is because in, in many cases, you are, first of all, killing off the adult, the parent parasite, and then a few days later, those that are hatching out uh, are then also destroyed. So that's the reason for the, the treatment. The third treatment normally is a, is a last backup, just to make absolutely sure that you have rid the pond of a particular parasite or, or uh, infection. Overstocking, I can't stress out, you're quite right, is... Uh, is one of the biggest problems. Rule of thumb, you want to give a fish this size, you want to give a thousand liters of water per fish. So if you've got 20,000 liters and you've got 40 fish like this, you're heading for trouble. You've got to be very careful. You can do that, of course, if you... There's, there's two schools of thought. High stocking density, large filtration system. Lower uh, uh, stocking densities, smaller filtration system, which kind of does make sense. Okay, I can feel the water is very, very cold. That's good. See, we're moving. Very happy with that. Okay, so we're out of the danger zone. There, she's upright. She's keeping her balance. And that's what we want. Okay. You can see the other one wants to come nearer, but it doesn't yeah. like us here. Right, I'm happy with what we've, what we've done here. Yeah. Yeah. It'll take a little while. She's still coming out, but she's, she's out of the danger zone now. Okay. Well, Jody, thank you once again for trusting me with your pets. Um, I appreciate it very much. And, um, and yeah, you know, uh, let's treat the little Gushiki quickly and then uh, the job's done. No, thanks, Kevin. And as I said, I'd rather have you do it than what I have to do these things. Um, I've tried it once before myself, but if you don't have all those uh, equipment and stuff that you've got, you know what, don't take the risk. It's not worth, not worth that money. Thank you. Okay, guys, that is uh, part of the medical episode that we promised you we'd have. And uh, if there's anything else that you need to, remember I said subscribe on YouTube. And, uh, and, and then, you know, one can answer certain questions uh, with regards to any episode. Thank you. Right, I uh, almost in, now in conclusion would like to just thank Thomas, my colleague, trusty colleague that's with me all the time, um, that we work together over 18 years now. And uh, so, Thomas, thank you very much. And um, thank you for helping me over the, all the years. Okay, Jody, so that's all sorted out now on the medication side. Uh, what's also very important really is uh, filtration, of course. So um, if you can just uh, run us through the type of filtration that you've got. Sure, Kevin. So uh, originally I started with, I think what everyone starts with is a pool sand filter. And um, I found that the pool sand filters, you have to clean like 
one, once a week and then after a month you have to replace the sand. So I wasn't very happy with that. Then I went to the bubble bead filter. Um, it worked nicely but it wasn't keeping the water quite as clear as I wanted it to clean it. And then I went back to the basics. And what I actually did is I got some nice pots which I put on the side of the the pond itself. Right. And inside it I put a piece, I put of course the filtration stones and stuff, the biomedia. Right. Then I put in a small, 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 thin layer of sponge. Okay. And then the filter wool on top of it. And that's just to take the worst of the um, rubbish out of the pond. Right. But the most important part is actually the plant filtration. Ah. Now you'll see my plant filtration, I would say, is maybe even bigger than what the pond is if you actually have to take the net size of it. Yes, I and, can see that. And what happens is it runs right from the back there, the water's pumped to the back. There's my water lily section. Right. Okay. And that, that I've actually put right in front of the TV room. Right. So when people come and visit, you know, they all see these beautiful water lilies and stuff. Uh, always looks nice. So yes. I started with that and then okay. from there what it does is it goes into the second section of plants. Right. And as it goes through the plants and the algae and stuff, it just picks up that final layer, that small layer of dust and stuff. Right. And it builds up a lot of bacteria as well. And then what happens from there is it goes directly into the pond. Now I'd say of all the filtration that you get, that is the biggest must. You must have plant filtration. Um, plant filtration I also find works better than any other filtration. It just catches dirt and muck so much better. Yes. And what's the best thing about it is it takes nitrates out of the water. Yes. And that's the most important part. And that's the liquid compost as we Correct. Are often call it. Correct. Yeah, I, I have to say and clearly by, by, by seeing how the plants grow um, so successfully it just shows you how well they're working mm. and how well they're taking out the the nitrate out of the out of the water. Yeah. And I can see how clear your water is mm. and how well balanced your water is. Yeah. So yes, plant filtration very definitely is one of the most important things uh, when it comes to purifying water. I found it over and over and over the years um, I now I now swear by that. It's uh, absolutely nice. You can also get uh, giant papyrus which you've got mm -hmm. you, but you've got so many different varieties that mm. give beautiful colored flowers mm. at the right time and then you've also got the floating plants you mm. know like the water lettuce and, mm. and that kind of thing um, the important thing that you you've also concentrated on here is that you're giving the water flow through the plants mm. for a, a healthier pond yes. and thus then a healthier fish and the secret is as well as you don't put the plants deep down yes. in the water, just yes. the roots, and you never put down so, uh, sand. You're right. You actually just let it run directly through the plants. Now a lot of pe people ask me, how do you balance the plants originally? So you just put some rocks, hold right. the plant, and okay. I promise you in two weeks you can take those rocks out and the plant uh, keeps itself with its roots up. Yeah, I know it works well. Well, Jody, thank you very much uh, for sharing us uh, this beautiful pond and uh, the plant filtration and everything else really greatly appreciate it you and Tanya and um, so that's a that's a wrap guys uh, we trust that you've enjoyed it and of course keep tuned tuned in so that we can uh, let you know some exciting episodes that still lie ahead thank you thank you